Uh, what's up guys? Uh, I met up with Josh, a very good friend of mine, a local here in St. Lucia. Okay, myself and Josh, we're gonna make our way to First Rocks. It's a bit of a, a hectic day. The sea is extremely dirty. I think it has to do with the river mouth. Um, so we're hoping when we get there that, uh, you know, we can actually do a bit of fishing because at the moment, yeah, it looks pretty bleak. I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do, I'm just basically going to use this red eye. I'm going to use the head. I don't have a dingle, but I have made a bite trace. And I'm going to put, uh, use the head with uh, this circle. And I'm going to cut cutlets and make a, like a ball bait. Because I figure the water is dirty. So what I'm thinking is throw it for like a shark or even a spinner, anything. But I, I doubt we're going to get any edibles in this dirty water, but you never know. But I do know what dirty water is the shark sent to chow, the browns and things like that. So uh, we're going to put this red eye on this hook and uh, with a bit of cutlets. You know, dingle does help, but without a dingle, it's not a train smash. You can always make it work. So yeah, guys, this is a bait presentation I'm going to show you. So what I do first is I cut the head just like that, just behind the gills. And that will be my base. All right, and then what I do then is I measure the cutlets I want to cut. So the head and the cutlets should be kind of proportioned, so the, the cutlets should be about so big. Alright, so what I can do is just split that in half. And that, that will be basically the size of my bait once I'm done.
yeah that's basically more or less the bait looks pretty uh, enticing for a shark so a shark should come and chow this or a ray or something and I've got a bar trace on there so something with some teeth tries to chow it uh, I shouldn't get bitten off that's more or less the bait Right. a little bit of grass might have to throw another shot just now let's give it uh, another 10 minutes maybe 20 minutes nothing shows any commitment and we'll change baits and throw another shot I'm going to change this grapnel and put a heavier grapnel on. This rod can manage a heavier weight, so hopefully I won't be rolling around as much and maybe put a bit more red out on this, on this bait here. If anything, it's just a blessing to be out here and fishing for a little bit. You know, I haven't fished rock and surf for such a long time. And I'm just blessed to at least be here by the waters. Not the most ideal conditions, considering the water is very dirty. But it beats a uh, day in the office, I guess. Yeah, guys, uh, I'm just going to show you briefly, quickly, how uh, to use this nifty tool on this rod. It's known as a bionic finger. Most surf rods uh, in South Africa, at least, uh, come with these. You can actually buy these things separately, and you can get them fitted on your rod. Okay, what this really is for, for like for example, you saw the the bait I put on now is pretty large, and what can happen is. Because you're fishing with braid, sometimes pretty thin braid, like 30 pound, it can actually cut your fingers pretty badly. You'll see in some of the videos I've done in the past, I don't often use this, but I rarely throw bigger baits. 
today I'm happy to, uh, I'm throwing a, a bit of a bigger size bait so I'm going to show you how to use this um, it's pretty straightforward so basically what this is for it eliminates you having to hold your your braid with your fingers so all you do is before you cast set your bail arm so your bail arm is kind of parallel to this to this bounded finger right then what you do is you take the line from here you pull this piece back and you wrap that around once or twice twice is fine and what you do is then you hold that trigger in just like that in place so you'll see now this is actually holding your line and preventing your bait from falling and what you do is when you're ready to cast you'll basically just release that there you go so I'm gonna cast with this and uh, show you how it basically works getting bites brah you're getting bites is it rolling and I wish I had grapnels here I should have come prepared but keep throwing in we'll see what happens you want to try that side we can let's wait a bit here maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes uh, we've decided that we're going to move a bit up the current's a bit uh, pretty, pretty hectic this side so uh, we're going to give it another 20 minutes and then we're going to start walking past those rocks okay we're winding up quickly we're going to walk past those rocks over there and uh, see if maybe there's a better spot we only have limited time we're not going to stay here until dark yeah First, lead the way, dude. How crazy is this, eh? Check it out. That is insane, dude. How's this? Eh? How's this camping spot, O's? <laughs> ah, this is pretty legit, dude. I think you'll never get that thing off. <laughs> uh, this thing is so deep. Pretty cool, eh? Is this the spot? Okay, let's do it. Okay guys, uh, as you can see it's getting a bit late, we still have another, I think what, 6k walk yeah. back home, so we're going to start making a mission, thank you guys for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed this episode, I'm sorry we never got any fish, but that's the name of the game sometimes, I was just blessed to be out here, myself and Josh, we had a great time, uh, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll see you in the next episode, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, you'll be helping me out a great deal, even if you don't subscribe, just like, you know, whatever. It's all good. Thank you very much. See you next time.